All right guys, welcome back to another video and behind me is our Kia Soul EV and generally I really like the car but it has one big issue that I want to address today. So let's get inside and I'll show you what it is. So you're probably asking yourself what is the biggest issue with the car? You are looking at it. It's the infotainment system. So unfortunately um, a lot of car manufacturers, Kia included, um, do all of their own software. Um, they don't go to Google to get uh, Android Automotive to put into their uh, their cars or even you know in the future there will be an option from from Apple I'm sure as well and uh, you know it's not exactly the most responsive and most intuitive system you see it is laggy it takes some time before you know it opens up menus like this one here so if I want to do my vehicle settings and stuff like that it does take a little bit of time right so obviously um, you know owners like myself are always looking at other options so what are some of the other options so the first option in a car like mine is to use um, Apple CarPlay right but the problem with Apple CarPlay is this that in my car unfortunately with this infotainment system I don't have an option for wireless uh, connectivity right so I always have to use a cable just like this right so it is a little bit cumbersome simply because after a while the connector here that you see even though you know my cable is the original Apple one um, it still doesn't work 100% you know as it should so sometimes when I connect my Apple CarPlay um, it doesn't connect so I have to reconnect a few times jiggle it a bit maybe jiggle this connection here that goes into the car and it's just you know it's not something that turns on automatically when you get into the car now obviously if this head unit supported wireless well then I wouldn't have this issue probably um, I would get in the car everything would get connected I didn't have to use you know a wire like this um, for any connection purposes but unfortunately I only have the wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connection so um, I started looking at options and see if there is anything out there um, that I could maybe purchase that will allow me to um, connect to this head unit um, wirelessly. So I was really happy when this company, One Car Stereo, reached out to me and said, hey, you know what, we'll send you one uh, unit like this that it will allow you to connect wirelessly to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on your head unit and, um, you know, review it and tell us what you think. So. Just as a disclaimer, um, this was sent to me for free for review, so I just want to let you guys know that. But all my opinions and the review itself and my conclusion are 100% mine, so I wasn't influenced by the company. Um, but yeah, so this is a cool thing, if it works, right? If it works. And um, well, let's uh, first check what's inside the box, okay? That's the first thing. Let's check what's inside there, um, and then Let's hook it up and see how it works. All right, guys, so this is what the box looks like. Pretty simple, nothing extravagant or, or beautiful. Again, I'm not sure what AI box honor means. Perhaps a different name would be good. One Color Stereo is the company that uh, manufactures, sells this thing. So let's have a look here. So this one is pretty awesome. So um, the unit itself has two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage memory. So you're probably wondering, why do you need storage? Because this is a dongle that allows you wireless Apple, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Well, we'll get to that when we uh, plug it in, I'll show you. And it's running Android 10. Okay, so let's open it up and see what is inside. So we start off with the instructions. Let's just say the instructions have a lot to be desired. Um, they give you the basic breakdown, but if you are looking how to see how to set this up, um, they have better instructions and more pictures on their Amazon listing. So check that out way better than this. Then this is the unit itself. Again, we got this AI box honor thing. Not sure why that is, but okay. Oh, it's pretty hard to take out. So we have the, the box itself in there. What else do we have? We have a small USB-C to USB-A cable. That's for connection purposes. It's not too long, so then you can mount it somewhere and you're able to then have this out of sight so you don't even notice the cable itself. I'll show you guys later. And then here you have an adapter from USB-C to USB-A. Pretty cool thing to include. Why not give a little bit extra to customers? 
if they don't have all of the necessary cables or if you need to connect a longer cable maybe you want to mount it somewhere further away from from your head unit so here let's have a look nothing on this side just ventilation on this side you've got hdmi and you've got usb a so simply put this hdmi out you can connect to the hdmi port if you have one in your vehicle and you can stream videos through this thing on, on your head unit um, which is pretty nice then you've got usb a and you have usb c on this side so obviously this usb connection goes in here all right and that goes into your car so pretty awesome and then you can also use this if you need it so that you have USB A and then you have your own cable and you can mount it anywhere else you want to mount it. Okay, but now the most important part, we got to peel off the sticker before we actually get to play with this. So let's go. Oh, this is always the most satisfying part of getting any new electronic product is peeling this off oh there you go all right guys so now we're uh, back in the car all right and let's see how this is going to all hook up so um i took the liberty of uh, removing that old wire from the bottom there so we're going to take the one that comes with um the unit and we're gonna plug that in there okay it's hard to see through the camera and then, then we have the USB-C here so now we're gonna take the unit itself right now we have the USB on this side and then we're going to be connecting it and then let's see what happens so let me connect it all and then I'll show you what happens on the screen uh, the box is just hooked up and it takes a little bit of time to get started so let's wait Okay, so now it's starting to read the USB. So you have the Android splash screen because this thing is actually two things in one. And let me explain when the main screen shows up. So there we go. So this is your main screen. Um, as soon as you uh, hook up um, the unit to your car, this is what pops up. And uh, if you've ever used Android Auto, it kind of looks similar, right? Um, so basically, this is the built-in Android system, Android 10, on the unit itself. So you can scroll around and you have various different apps, okay, that you can use. And yes, you did see YouTube. Um, you have Google Play, so you can download apps that you would want to have on this. So as an EV driver, um, this is pretty cool because I can download a host of apps that will allow me to find chargers, connect to chargers if I'm on the way there and I want to start charging and things like that. So this is actually pretty cool. Um, I, I really like that, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're able to um, to install apps on our own in this system. So obviously on the on the side here, you have your, um, you know, Google Assistant. This is your Wi-Fi. So you can, um, you know, connect to your phone through a hotspot, right? Um, this one is connected wirelessly to my other iPhone. So that's already set up. And then obviously this is just a back button or a home screen button, um, both of those, right? So pretty cool. So when you start it, that's what happens and that's what you see. Um, so now, um, obviously you can, you know, exit back to your uh, infotainment system that you have on your car, pretty simple. You can have videos that you have stored locally on the thing. Um, you can also play music, again, locally. You have your Google Maps here. And yeah, even um, YouTube is here. Obviously, you can set it so that um, you're not going to be able to play YouTube on uh, on the car while you're driving. So let's say you're at a charger and you want to watch it on a bigger screen. Um, you can just play it on, on, on your infotainment, right? So that's pretty awesome, okay? So just to show you guys that it actually works, let's launch YouTube uh, and, and see how long it takes to load up. It's actually not not that uh not that slow so it's pretty good all right so you guys can go here to your subscription feed um whatever your subscription feed has so for example you can go and watch your favorite uh electric car motoring show which 
for me is fully charged. There you go. And uh, let's launch a video here and then see if it actually plays. And yes, yes, it does. Obviously, I don't want to play the sound because then, uh, you know, I'm going to get a copyright strike here. But yeah, um, it's pretty cool. And then, you know, um, you have everything just like what you have with uh, with the normal, uh, you know, normal YouTube app. So you have your autoplay there, which you can toggle on and off uh, so that you don't play the next uh, next video. So autoplay is off. Yeah. So it works pretty well. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, I, I, I love my Tesla for having a lot of these cool things, cool features. And somehow now um, I have the same thing here in, in, in my car. So if you want to go back, obviously you can, you know, minimize or maximize the video. Sorry. So this was actually minimized. That's cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you want to go back, you can go back here. You can turn off the the video play time and then for example if you're done on this screen you can go back here and you see this little box that's movable you can move it anywhere you want click on it and then you can go back to your home screen here and it's pretty quick so yeah uh, that's the android side so it does have a lot of functionality so you know you have extra apps here that they've uh, provided for you so you've got disney plus um, what else we have here? Um, obviously Google Maps. Um, what else? Uh, to do Hulu and so on and so forth. Spotify, Netflix. Yeah. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just built in. So even if you don't have a smartphone or you don't want to use one, you can just use this pretty much. Right. So pretty simple. Love it. And then just to show you guys that the Play Store really works. Um, there you go. So the Play Store really works. You can search for apps. You can download whatever you want to download. It's pretty amazing. So, yeah, I like it. And then, like I say, if you want to go back to the main screen, you just click on that. And then you go to back to the main screen. And then this is the back button to go to the, you know, the, I would say, main, main screen. Yeah. Okay. So that's the Android side, okay, of the unit. So now let's have a look at the... Um, the, the, the side that is most interesting for most people, which is having the ability of using CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly. You have to connect uh, via Bluetooth to the unit. So you would click here. My phone is already connected, um, but you would see a connection window here. And then you just have to confirm the connection on your phone, especially for, for Apple devices. It will ask you to use CarPlay. Um, then you just agree to it. Um, the manual it does a pretty good job of explaining this part. So uh, it might not be perfect for everything else, but this part is explained pretty clearly. So once it's connected via Bluetooth, then it's very simple. All you have to do is, and let me just get my, um, get my phone here so that you guys can see both things at once. Click Car Auto. So it's connecting to to my iPhone right now and you see CarPlay pops up and then it pops up right here on the screen and it's wireless. So I go here, you see, I use all of my apps, everything, and I don't have a wire connected, which is super awesome. I love it. I mean, I wish more cars had just this natively. Unfortunately, I don't have it. Um, but uh, good thing that this works. So um, you see, I have LTE connection. I have everything. Um, you know, I have access to all my apps. So if I want to, um, you know, travel somewhere, for example, I have my uh, uh, my um, Apple Maps, Google Maps, whatever I need. Right. So it works and it works perfectly well. There is absolutely no lag. It works really well. And once you pair it, um, it just connects every time you push that button. So one more time, we just have to click this one again, remember, to go back to um, the main screen here. And then this is already connected through, um, let me just see if I can pull this up, through the USB, it's connected. And then when you get in the car, it just you know automatically starts. And then all you need to do is just push this button and then boom, it works. So once you've made the connection once, 
um, and you go back and forth between this and then let's say the Android side, it's pretty seamless, right? So pretty awesome. I mean, uh, you know, this is what I've always wanted just to be able to get in the car, have this boot up, connect my phone and not have to worry about anything else. So now we're on the move. Connection, everything is perfect. So now let's see if a wireless navigation will work. Sure, let's go here. Okay, and we say go. And then off we go. So as we can see right now, it's working perfectly. No issues whatsoever. So we can turn here. Obviously, I'm not going to go all the way where the destination is. We're going to turn around on some of the streets here um, just to test it out. But like I say, navigation works. There's no delay in input or anything like that. So now, let's see if we want to play some music. Here we go. Music is playing. Obviously, I can't play it because I don't want to get demonetized, but it's there. We can skip to the next song, to the next song, to the next song, to the next song, and so on and so forth. So now we've turned off. Let's see if uh, navigation will update. It has updated itself. Boom, very fast no issues whatsoever let's turn here yeah works perfectly and then we can go back to our music if we need to we can go to the next song next song next song next song easy so it works quite well I'm very happy and then of course, like while we're driving and then you want to have access to, let's say the Android side. So like I said, this little buttons here, you can go back and then now you're here again on the Android side. You can switch to watching YouTube videos, but not while driving, obviously that is frowned upon. But then, yeah, if you want to go back to CarPlay or Android Auto, you click that, boom, you're here play your music your navigation is still going in the background so you can just leave uh, return to where you left off so now let's mount this thing permanently in our car so I figure I'm gonna use some really strong uh, Gorilla tape so this is double-sided tape um, and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it in half here and then put one strip here and one strip here and then that should hold this in place nicely what I want to don't want to do is cover this ventilation area but since this is a little bit thicker and it's going to be raised a little bit so um, air is going to go flow through there plus we have you know the size here as well so sh that should be enough okay so uh, let me cut it to size and then uh, I'll show you guys what it would look like so the tape has been mounted so we have two sides of it and then I think this is going to be strong enough to hold it and then we just peel this off when we get to the car and then we'll mount it on the side yeah that's good let's go check it out how we will look in the vehicle and here is the finished product so this is nice here the wires are nicely tucked in there there's not too much slack on the wire so we'll see how that works but I think that's pretty good and it's not gonna get into anybody's way plus we can still use the little cubby here so there you go that's how i would mount it in a kia soul ev but obviously every car is different so i will leave that up to you conclusion time so what do i think of the one car stereo ai box owner unfortunate name i have to say but a great product so i didn't expect it to be good at all honestly 
I was looking at getting one of these devices because I really want to have wireless CarPlay in my car. I hate fiddling with the with with the wire, as I told you guys at the beginning of the video. But I never pulled the trigger on any of them, simply because I didn't think that they would be good enough. Um, I, I thought there would be connection issues, there would be problems, and I just didn't want to deal with that. And I said, okay, wired is always best, right? Like at home, you know, when you want to use internet, play video games online, or whatever, you always have to have a direct LAN connection, right? and that's the most stable so i always thought okay it would be cool to have but you know i'd rather stick with the wire but after a while it was just like the wire started jiggling and all that the connection wasn't good so i was like okay let's look into the options and you know these guys reached out and said hey you know what we have this box do you want to try it out and i said sure why not let's try it out so honestly i'm pleasantly surprised i was expecting much worse than um than what i got so what do i like about it connection to carplay perfect no issues whatsoever, even though I have to, you know, wait for it to boot up and push one little button to connect to CarPlay, I'm okay with that. I'm good. All right, works perfectly, doesn't disconnect. You know, I mounted it permanently, as you guys saw, very happy with it, okay? What I also like is the addition of Android 10, all right, in the standard, just like when you connect the box, as I showed you. Where as an iPhone user, I have access to apps that I may not have on um, on the Apple, you know, iOS store, right? So App Store. So I can put those on. 32 gigs of memory is perfect. It's enough, right? So that's cool because I have both options, right? I can use this or that and I can, you know, put a wireless hotspot and I can connect the box to it. It works perfectly, okay? So... All of that, the basic functionality and the extra stuff that I didn't even know about, plus it's got an HDMI out if you have an HDMI connection in your car so you can play movies that you've downloaded, awesome. All right, so functionality wise and what they promised, it works. So I'm happy with that. But now let's look at some of the negatives. So the first negative is the price. It's 159 US dollars. They're running a promotion now. You can get $15 discount if you buy it. But still, I think that something like this should be about a hundred bucks, okay? Especially given the competition and how much of that is available on the market, I think definitely they should reconsider the price. So that's the first thing. Second thing is that um, this box comes, as it says here on the on the packaging, with two gigs of RAM. So as we know, RAM is important to make sure that we get a smooth experience, right? Like we open up apps faster and all of that. So as you guys saw, it does take a little bit of time to start certain apps like YouTube and whatever else, right? So increasing that to four or maybe eight, you know, RAM nowadays isn't that expensive, right? Especially these guys are putting in 32 gigs of, of memory. Obviously it's not gonna be fast memory, right? I'm not looking for that, but just a little bit more so that we get a smoother experience. And I think that's doable, 100%. So if they can up that, especially for that price point that they're aiming for, giving a little bit more in RAM, I think would be perfect. You know, you would get that smoother experience on the Android side, which I think is a pretty good and, and, and decent selling point for this. You know, so, so yeah, definitely improving that. And then finally, the biggest downside that, um, that I've noticed is that if you live in a house or a townhouse or whatever, where you're, you're parking your car in a garage, right? That is attached to your home, for example. Um, the Bluetooth connection that you have with the box will stay on when you turn off the car. So you're at home, someone calls you and the voice goes through the box, but the car is turned off. So it's really weird. And I don't know why is that, why is that is happening. I, I'm hoping that they could do something about it, maybe in a future iteration or maybe an update or whatever, where they can have it so that when you turn off the car, the box turns off, you know. Now to mitigate that, you would just have to unplug it, right, from the socket. But then again, that's kind of going against what this is supposed to be doing, where we're not using wires, right? Like we just keep it plugged in. Like I don't have that issue. I live in a high rise. I park my car, my car downstairs in the garage. I'm 12 floors up, there's no way that my Bluetooth connection is gonna stay on. So I don't have that issue. But if you live in a house or whatever, when you're close to the car where you're parking it, then you will have that um, that problem happening, right? So it's across the board, it's with Android and, and, and iPhones, right? So that should be fixed. Uh, anything else? No, I think that's it. Those are the biggest negatives, I, I, I feel. So they're not that huge, they're not deal breakers in any sort of way. 
And I think that if you're in the market for something like this, you know, um, I think you, 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 you get what you pay for here. You pay a little bit more, but you also get a little bit more. I'm hoping, I don't know what the other guys are offering, so I can't say for, for sure, but what I've experienced was awesome. So, you know, I couldn't ask for more. It works. It connected and yeah, everything was okay. So yeah, uh, if you guys want to check it out, um, I've got a link in the description to Amazon. Um, so far, I only saw it available on Amazon US, but if I find it somewhere else around the world, I'll update links below. Um, go check it out and see if it's for you. And if you have, you know, an infotainment system where you don't have a wireless connection and you want one, well, that's going to help you. Okay. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like these kind of videos about EVs and uh, different technology for cars and stuff like that, make sure uh, to subscribe below. Like the video if you liked it. I try to be unbiased and give you honest reviews of these products, even though they send it to me for free. So yeah, please like the video if you liked it and um, I will see you on the next one. All right, take care.